Every so often, you've got to do something with the empty bottles of whiskey. And today's the day we're going to go through a few of them in one of my recycle reviews and talk about each bottle and relive some fond memories of what... Hey! What? What are you doing? Uh, guitar! Riffs! Yeah. And I'm recording the review, oh, the hi. whiskey part of this. Get out of the frame! Sure! Stay out of the frame! Okay! Um, I don't know where I was. Anyway. Let's do this. Hey, that's my line. Let's do this. Sorry. You're in trouble. Welcome to Whiskey Riffs. I'm Kevin, and as I mentioned, it's Recycled Review Day, which means I have a bunch of bottles that are empties, um, it's kind of good to go through them again. I'll give you my favorites out of the list. Maybe if there's any that I'm not going to purchase again, I'll let you know about those. Basically, not a detailed review because if I even get a dribble out of these bottles, I'm lucky. So let me grab the first bottle. We'll go through it and see what we got. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Glen Morangy, the Quinta Rubin. It's a beautiful 14-year port cast finish scotch whiskey. It's a Highland scotch, so there's no smoke or peat to it. It's just a beautiful, lovely uh, dream of a drink for me. It's one of my favorites. I try to always have a bottle around and yeah, good memories, good tastes, maybe a little, little bit in there. It's not as good as when the bottle is full, but um, tasty still. So this is always in my cabinet. I love it. I will keep buying it. It's always going to be there. I always save the corks too because corks are good. Corks give you the ability to recork a bottle that has a broken cork. Ah, speaking of whiskeys that are always in my cabinet, I always try to have a McAllen in my cabinet. I don't drink McAllen all the time because it's generally a little higher price than some of the other ones, especially when you get above 12 years. Um, but it's a nice uh, classic Highland Scotch whiskey. And since it's matured in uh, Juarez uh, Sherry Oak casks, it's always gonna give you a nice sweet finish to the whiskey. And this one actually has a little bit in there. Let me see. Yeah, much different than the Glen Morangy. Uh, this one is, I think it has some more edginess to it, a little more spice to it. And this one is a, a little softer on the finish. Let's see what else we got in here. Powers, John Lane. This is a really nice little Irish whiskey. Uh, the Powers, the John, John Lane release is a little more upscale than some of their other whiskeys. This is a... Uh, a 12 year so it's got a nice age statement on it and um it's 46 percent abv which a lot of times the whiskeys that i get from from ireland are lower especially if they're pot still whiskeys um this one is also a single pot still whiskey so it's very generous to have the 46 on there Let's see if i can get anything out of this yeah, it's a little bit done there Definitely an Irish whiskey. Got those um, apple flavors, um, a little bit of honey and spice. A lot more spicy than I would say a um, some of my other favorite ones, uh, maybe like a Green Spot or uh, Redbreast 12. What we got now? Ah, Buffalo Trace. This is a lovely bourbon, mainly because it's so affordable. Now, I have heard some people say they have trouble getting it. I never have trouble getting it. It's always available around me, usually for under $25 per bottle. So that's a really good price point, especially if you just want a whiskey that is nice to have around, soft and easy to drink, and you don't feel like spending a lot of money just to have a, a whiskey to sip at night. Dramatic taste difference from the Irish whiskeys 
more of the the oak barrel taste because you're starting off with uh, new oak for bourbon. So you definitely have more of the influences and the spices of oak in that. I do try to keep that around because, like I said, it's affordable. It's a really nice dram. And why not have a, a good affordable whiskey? Oh, speaking of Redbreast, I have a bottle of Redbreast. Now this is the um, Lustau edition. So it's not my favorite favorite version of Redbreast Irish Whiskey. It is single pot still, but because it is um, sherry finish, it really changes the, the ending, the, the flavors a lot for me. And I think I prefer just a nice um, Redbreast 12, maybe even the cast strength. I think, uh, I don't know if I'd buy this again. No, I don't think so. I, I, I think I just prefer the regular red breast and I think this was even a little more pricey than the red breast. So why go forward and spend more money on something that I'm not enjoying as much as one of the originals. So red breast lust out, not so much. Lagavulin 8. Now, the Lagavulin is um, a classic scotch whiskey the eight year is really nice i generally have the 16 year round i don't know if i'll buy the eight again now this is an isla whiskey so you're going to get the smoke you're going to get that, that peat finish and you're going to get a lot of um a lot of extras that you're not going to get with an irish whiskey with the uh, the highlands or even the bourbons but I really love Lagavulin. It's, again, sometimes a little pricier, but I really enjoy having that 16 year round. And I try to always make sure that it's in stock somewhere. Uh, I might get the eight year again too. It all depends on pricing and availability for these things. You take what you can get sometimes. Let's see what else. We have another bourbon. This is Elijah Craig, small batch. The small batch is uh, a little more intense. This is the barrel proof. And specifically, this is batch uh, B519, which some people have said is a very nice batch. I think it is. I, I really enjoy uh, cast strength bourbons and whiskey. So it's always good for me to have something like this around. Um, because they're very different, uh, each batch of these, you're going to get a different experience based on each one. It's not like you can say, well, Elijah Craig barrel proof is going to be consistently the same every single time. There are subtle differences. And the, uh, the C batches, I think there's a C515 is very popular too, but this is 122 proof. So you're going to get some intensity with it. And it's definitely a, um, a good bourbon. And I've had a couple of these um, and I bought one for a friend. So definitely worthwhile. Definitely hard to drink with that big flange on top. Yeah, the, the little dribble in the bottom doesn't do it justice. But it's uncut straight from the barrel. If you like uh, healthy, strong bourbons, Elijah Craig barrel proof, really nice. Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Let's see if we have anything else in here. Oh yeah, one more. Ah, another Irish. So Teeling, one of my favorite uh, new Irish whiskeys. They have a new, um, the, 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 the actual brand has been around for a while. The distillery that's in Dublin right now is, is fairly new, um, not that many years old. And I was lucky enough to go there with my wife and we really enjoyed their tours uh, the way they're taking care of the whiskeys. This is their single pot still Irish whiskey. It's non-chill filtered and it's got um, a good alcohol percentage too, 46% ABV. Um, I definitely recommend it. I haven't had this dram in a while and I really can't remember all the nuances. And that was basically vapors, so I'm not getting any nuance out of that. 
but I believe it was a nice soft Irish whiskey and I would go for it again. In fact, I think I, yeah, I have a bottle right over there that I purchased. So I may end with that because I need to toast with something. Okay, let me grab that. See if I can crack this open quickly. There we go. Glass. Whoa. There we go. And a little bit for the table. That's always good. Yeah, very mild. I love pot still whiskeys. Irish pot still to me has some really nice flavors. Well, this is a recycled review. Uh, it's not a review of this Teeling Pasta Whiskey. That's for another video. Until then, till the next video, take care of yourself. I hope you and yours are doing well and enjoying our 2021. Until next time, cheers. Very nice. He's gone. <laughs>